Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm going to show you how to add Afterpay as a payment option using Web Payments SDK. We'll only be covering implementing Afterpay, but if you're interested in other payment options, make sure to check out our videos about Web Payments SDK. Let's take a look at our Web Payment Quick Start. If you're following along with us, you'll want to be sure to set up your sandbox access token by copying the .env.example file to a new file named .env.sandbox and setting your access token on the square access token environment variable. Now let's start up the app. Open up the terminal and run npm run dev. Great, now let's go to localhost with port 3000 in our browser and we have our app loading. We'll navigate to Afterpay and we see that we have an error message telling us that our application ID and or location ID are incorrect. Let's go set those. We'll find this in the public folder under examples and it is named afterpay.html. Let's paste in our sandbox application ID and location ID here. Now we can save and reload the page. Awesome, the error message isn't showing up and we see the Afterpay button is showing. Let's test making a payment. You want to check our docs on more info for sandbox test values and details on how to test Afterpay for different scenarios. Our test payment went through. So we've taken a look at how to configure the Quick Start app for Afterpay, and we see that we got a test payment working. Now let's walk through the implementation of this so you can learn how to add this to your own application. We're back in the afterpay.html file. So we'll just skip down to the initialize Afterpay function. This function takes in a payments object that we get from initializing Web Payments SDK. It then builds a payment request using the build payment request method, also passing in the payments object. Let's take a look at what that function does. So just like with digital wallets, we need to create a payment request to specify some information about the payment we're trying to process. Then we're adding an event listener on afterpay underscore shipping address changed and returning an object that specifies our shipping options. Be sure to check out our docs linked in the description for more details on all your available options. There's also another event listener here for handling when a buyer changes the shipping option so you can properly handle what they've chosen. Finally, we're returning the request object. So let's go back to initialize Afterpay to see what happens next. We're creating an Afterpay variable and assigning it using a wait on payments.afterpayclearpay, passing in the payment request we just created. Next, we're attaching Afterpay to the DOM by waiting on afterpay.attach and passing in the ID of the element that we want to replace with the Afterpay button. To wrap it up, we're returning the Afterpay object from our initialize Afterpay function. So we now know how to initialize Afterpay using this function, well, let's go to where we actually run the function. For that, let's head down to our event listener for DOM content loaded. Let's skip past this error handling and take a look at where we're initializing the Web Payments SDK. Then, just below that, we can see where we're initializing Afterpay. At this point, the DOM is loaded and we've initialized Afterpay, but we still need to detect when someone has clicked on the Afterpay button so we know when to process a payment. We'll skip down again here to see that we're checking if the Afterpay variable has been set. Then we're getting our Afterpay button using get element by ID and attaching an event listener to listen for the click event. Within that event listener, we're calling a wait on the handle payment method submission, passing in the event and our Afterpay object. If we scroll up a little, we can see this function calls tokenize on the payment method that was passed in, then attempts to create a payment with the token and display the results. And that covers how to implement Afterpay with Web Payments SDK. If you want to learn more about the backend portion or just see an end-to-end -end payment flow, be sure to check out our video on end-to-end -end payments with Web Payments SDK, which is linked in the description below. As always, be sure to check our documentation that we've linked below for more information on all the features you can use for Afterpay with Web Payments SDK. Happy coding!